Okay, so what might be more di more difficult, more challenging in terms of the reproductive system is the physiology of the reproductive system. Male reproductive system is relatively easy. I'm going to say relatively because no, it's still difficult. But once you get to female reproductive system, oh, wait, I, I keep telling you guys, I always tell every one of my classes, the reproductive system and how it works in women is way complicated. Okay. We'll get women and then we'll go back to men. It's like, oh, this is not as bad as I, as it could be. Okay. So for the male reproductive system, you're going to think about a couple of physiological processes. One of those is spermatogenesis. Spermatogenesis just simply means making sperm. Okay. So I didn't cover the anatomy of the seminiferous tubule but I'm going to do that while I create a chart of spermatogenesis, all right? So this is a cross-section of the seminiferous tubule. Just imagine we have the seminiferous tubule like this. It has an outer part that's gonna have cells basically on the outside portion of the tubule, and then the inside portion of the tubule is a lumen, which means an opening, okay? Surrounding the tube, you have um, some myoid cells. And then you also have interstitial endocrine cells, which are also called Leydig cells. So that's my myoid layer. The myoid cells, what they do is essentially they're going to constrict and they cause the movement of sperm down the seminiferous tubules. So you have some external cells here. So here, basically, these are my outside cells, and then these are my inside cells, okay? Uh, so let me get my cheat sheet here one more time for, for my uh, chart. So I'm not going to do a flow chart downwards. I'm going to do a flow chart sideways or sideways, whatever, instead, and use my seminiferous tubule when I get to, towards the end of my flow chart. Essentially, you want to think about starting with the hypothalamus. So we're going to look at the hormonal production of spermatogenesis or the hormonal control, excuse me, of spermatogenesis. And then we're going to think about what's happening actually to the different cells that are in the seminiferous tubule. So the hypothalamus is going to release gonadotropin releasing hormone. Again, you need to know what GNRH stands for. I'm just abbreviating because it's easier during the video, okay? Gonadotropin-releasing hormone targets the anterior pituitary gland. So again, you have to write those things out. You don't just abbreviate them, okay? The an anterior pituitary gland is then going to release two hormones, basically two gonadotropins. One of those gonadotropins is going to be follicle-stimulating hormone. Again, you write out the whole thing, okay? Follicle-stimulating hormone is going to be one, and luteinizing hormone, or LH, is the other one. We write out luteinizing hormone, okay? So basically, FSH and LH are going to target specific parts of the seminiferous tubule. It's going gonna, it's gonna to target specific portions. Actually, I'm going to switch this. Sorry, I need to flip that to LH and FSH because I need to go up. Okay. So LH and FSH are going to are gonna essentially target different cells in the seminiferous tubules and, and cause uh, spermatogenesis. Okay. So what's going to happen is you're going to have LH. LH is going to target these cells up here. These are called the Leydig cells. Sometimes they're, again, many textbooks are trying to get to, to remove names that are named after people. So they're also sometimes referred to as the uh, interstitial endocrine cells, sorry. Remember, interstitial just means between, and endocrine means it makes a hormone. 
So we're going to target the interstitial endocrine cells. And what those cells are going to do is they're going to produce testosterone. Okay. Testosterone is going to be released into the seminiferous tubule. And what it's going to do is it's going to basically target these spermatocytes. The spermatocytes go through the process of meiosis. This is meiosis. Okay, so these these are this is meiosis. Let's say that's meiosis one. We can say this is meiosis two. To create sperm. These are also spermatocytes, but we're just gonna call that sperm. Okay. So testosterone is essentially going to help us with the development of sperm. The other thing is gonna be FSH is going to target these cells in the middle. This is called either a cystinocyte or a cystinacular cell. Ooh, sorry about my spelling right there. It's kind of small, sustenacular cells, okay? Essentially what those are going to do, and maybe I'll put this in a, a different color. Nah, uh, sure. What those cells are gonna do is they release another um, substance. It's not exactly a hormone, it's called APB. Basically what you're releasing is uh, androgen binding protein. Okay. It's called androgen binding protein because it's going to help testosterone remain in the seminiferous tubule for a longer time. And it's going to help with spermatogenesis. Okay. That's essentially what's, what's going to happen. As our sperm count increases here. So as sperm count increases, What is essentially going to happen is two negative feedback mechanisms. So I'm going to show you those two negative feedback mechanisms, and I'm going to feed them back. And then since this is actually not the chart that I really wanted, I'm going to kind of maybe try to make another flow chart for you also. Okay. So as sperm count increases, basically testosterone levels will be kind of high at the same time because sperm counts high. So testosterone is going to feed back to the anterior pituitary gland and to the hypothalamus, and it's gonna turn off those systems so that testosterone levels go back down and sperm count goes back down. So this is a negative feedback, okay? So I know some of you had a little bit of a hard time with that. Remember negative feedback decreases our stimulus, right? If we have an increase in testosterone, then we have a negative feedback to decrease testosterone. The other thing that happens is the sustenacular cells also start to release inhibit. So essentially as sperm, sound, sperm count increases, you have an increase in inhibit as well as testosterone. And inhibin is also going to feed back and basically turn off the anterior pituitary gland and turn off the hypothalamus, okay? So you kind of want to think about there's two situations or two things that are necessary. Well, why am I writing negative? I meant to write feedback, Feed back. There's two things that are going to help you turn off the system and decrease sperm production. That has to be both testosterone levels being high and inhibin levels being high. Okay. So this is part of the reason why testosterone is not really given to men as a birth control measure, because testosterone levels have to be really high. and Testosterone has some secondary effects like behavioral effects, essentially. Right. So that's how you turn the system off. If you want a slightly better flow chart, because this one, I apologize, did not really go as I had planned for it to go. I mean, 
I hope it kind of makes sense, but maybe it doesn't fully make sense. You just kind of want to think about maybe we'll do maybe we'll just do a like a nice easy flow chart over here. And I'm gonna abbreviate like hypothalamus creates GNRH. GNRH targets the anterior pituitary gland. The anterior pituitary gland makes LH and makes FSH. Okay. So FSH is going to target our sustatinocytes. Sustinocytes. The sustinocytes make androgen binding protein. that are basically going to target the spermatocytes to bind testosterone. That's what they're gonna do, okay? Also, the sustinocytes as a result are going to make inhibit. Ooh, I wish that was on the other side. See why you have to have like a better outline before you get started. But I'm gonna kind of put it right here, sorry, in Hibben. Okay. LH is gonna target our interstitial endocrine cells. That's why you don't abbreviate IEC. You're never gonna remember what that means or your Leydig cells. Okay, they make testosterone. Testosterone also hits the spermatocytes. Those spermatocytes basically go through meiosis to become sperm. That increases sperm count, okay? So the spermatocytes kind of need APB plus testosterone so that you ramp up your production of sperm, okay? So you what you wanna do is your negative feedback now. So as sperm count increases, testosterone levels will be very high and testosterone feeds back and turns off anterior pituitary gland and turns off hypothalamus. So what that does is, now I'm going to draw this on here, kind of over here, it turns this off and it turns this off and it turns this off, right? So no more sperm production, okay? Inhibin will also increase as sperm count increases and that goes back to the anterior pituitary gland. It goes back to the hypothalamus to turn those systems off. So again, it's helping us stop uh, GNRH from being created and it's stopping LH and it's stopping FSH. So that's how we stop the system so you don't overproduce sperm. So as sperm count goes down, then you turn the system back on again because the negative feedback turns off, right? Because testosterone levels decrease and inhibit levels decrease and the system gets turned back on again, okay? So that's spermatogenesis. Things you also want to think about, though, is this is the spermatogonia. Remember, the spermatogonia is the stem cell. That is in the outermost layer of the seminiferous tubule. It must go through mitosis. Okay, you need to understand why. It goes through mitosis because this cell is going to divide into two and creates two identical daughter cells. And then you see how one of them, this one, got selected for mitosis. I'm sorry, for meiosis and to become sperm. This one over here, let's just, I don't know, make it red, did not get selected. It remains a spermatogonia, which means that it can divide in, into two daughter cells again. The reason this has to happen is if you don't do this, this spermatogonia becomes four cells. How do I create another four cells? I don't have a spermatogonia to create those other four cells. Okay. 
this is the reason for mitosis to also occur in uh, sex organs. You have to increase the number of sperm cells you have, basically. Okay. Okay. So that's spermatogenesis. And then the next is going to be the male sexual response. And once you have sperm, what do you do with it? 